Uh, later in the show, the same Clash of the Champions 16, you write in your book that you were set to give your first live interview, and they're counting you down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. And Paulie Dangerously, Paulie turns to me, yep. who's connect, conducting the interview, and he says, who would have thought two homeboys from New York live on national television? Yep. And then Paulie hands you the mic for your big live debut, dot, dot, dot. I sucked. Yeah, you know, this is another instance where I think I may have been a little too tough on myself. You are. Because I think from a character-driven, st- first of all, I'm just learning through repetition. Not, not so much repetition. I'm learning more uh, from visualization and belief in myself. And I'm, and I'm, this was my method. Other people, mirrors and, you know, looking in the mirror and cutting promos, uh, filming themselves, which I think everybody should do, especially because the filming is so easy to do these days. Uh, but I had that ability to think of things and to try to bring them to life and especially had the confidence to do a bunch of different things and to try out different things, which somebody could have uh, warned me was not the safe way to go. Um, I mean, the safe way is to think of one promo and do it over and over on your uh, market-specific promos. But I was getting so much practice on a regular basis and I just, I believed in myself, but here I know I've got one of the biggest payoffs in my life, you know, that I've just, I've dropped the elbow of my career, you know, on Sting. Yes. Now I see Logan Paul every time there's a WWE commercial doing a much better and more athletic, you know, move than I did. But at that time, 280 pounds coming off the second turnbuckle with the best elbow I've ever dropped. Maybe that, maybe the, it, between that one and the one I dropped on Randy Orton at Backlash 2004, but to have a guy of Sting's magnitude selling the hell out of it, Yes. now we've got to pay it off. Now, there would be people who rightfully so said you gave him his comeback on the same show, but that's just the way WC, that's the way you know, WCW did it. Vince sometimes didn't even want to leave a show without the babyface making some kind of a showing for himself. But I know Sting's going to come out of that box, and more so, specific to what we're doing, I believe quality was going to win out. Yes. And if I could put something up on the board, have two big wins in one night, it didn't matter to me that Sting had gotten his comeback. I thought people are going to want to see more of this, uh, more of this rivalry. And it was one of the great compliments I've ever received in my life. You know that. Staying who just a few weeks earlier had been told this guy's just here to put you over, is then saying among the nicest words I've ever heard, he just looked at me when we got to the back and he went, you're great. And I'm getting like these, you know, the, I get an emotional guy. Uh, and that was, man. Validation. You validation. Needed. And we were off to the races after that.